my name's Tanya Rose and I'm here setting up for the uh, on-course screening of High as Mike tonight. High as Mike's a documentary about the trials and tribulations of people in Australia trying to seek to use medicinal cannabis. Um, our daughter suffers from epilepsy and we'd really like to try and apply to get her on medicinal cannabis. How it's putting cancer in remission and helping people with Crohn's and kids as well with seizures and everything like that. So um, I think I'll know more after the bit of more education tonight, but I actually think it's uh, way forward massively. Um, the doctors need to be put onto courses and be um, upskilled and educated. I'm looking forward to it actually because um, I do have a lot of pain myself and I reckon it could help me very much. So the, the people want change and I think in numbers that we can do that. Um, and like nights like this, it's great to see that it's the second view of your bumbery. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely numbers. So thank you everyone for coming along tonight. Um, without your support this literally wouldn't have gone ahead so I really appreciate you being here. Um, after the uh, documentary tonight, we will be having a question and answer time with some uh, industry experts from both Perth and locally. So in the Greater Bunbury area there's 65,000 people and we know of one person that has approved prescribed medical cannabis and we've got one pharmacist that can give that out. So we're either a really healthy bunch or we don't know what to do. And that's like why documentaries like this are important because they're going to educate us all. So sit back and relax and enjoy everyone. Do you think that every Australian should have the right to try medicinal cannabis? The only option is to get the drug on the black market. Most of the people that call me have been told they're going to die. Why are we arguing about these kids taking a cocktail of 20 drugs with horrendous side effects when all they need to take is an oil? If any one of these fucking politicians could actually come and experience this, this world would change straight away. My only alternative is the black market. I can't advise you to break the law, but you know, I know what I would do. <laughs> Highs Mike is a documentary about the difficulties that Australians are having getting medicinal cannabis and I encourage you all to go to Fanforce and get the movie screened in your hometown. And I'd say, thank you mother flower, I'm not dying. I'm proud to be a part of this documentary, Hi as Mike. Doesn't matter if it has the THC in it or can you have it without the THC? I was a little bit confused on that one. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are three, you know, broadly there are equal mixes of CBD and THC. There are pure CBD formulations. There are probably, I don't know if there are any pure THC formulations, but there may be high THC and low CBD formulations and a whole lot of points in between with varying amounts of CBD and THC and that is quite a precision issue and that's because there isn't something that fits, uh, you know, fits all, uh, all people. I'll give you an example. This is a bottle of the medical cannabis that I'm on. A lot of, there's a lot of misinterpretation that medical cannabis comes, you can smoke it or you can put it in a bong or you vape it or whatever else. Most of the Australian stuff comes as an oil. Now, this one here is equal proportions of THC and CBD. For my condition, which is multiple sclerosis, I've tried almost the, the almost exclusively CBD stuff. It didn't have any of the effects that I needed. Without the, oh, okay. So this one, 50-50 THC and CBD, within probably six weeks of starting to take this, it had enormous benefits on me. Now that's a personal thing, it's an anecdote. It's not a clinical trial. It worked well for me. And the reason I'm involved in this is because I want everybody else to have the opportunity to try it for themselves. There are so few side effects, no recorded deaths in history. Everybody, I feel, should at least be trying to give it a go. Now, I'm not suggesting that you need to go down the medical cannabis route. There are different opinions and different ways of looking at this. For me, with a compromised immune system, compromised health, I had no choice from my personal perspective but to go down the medical path because I wanted to be as safe as I possibly could be. My personal opinion. And just to add to that, with the, um, 
question about the CBD or even amount or high THC would work for you. If you were on a CBD dominant oil and that didn't work for you, that doesn't mean CBD dominant oil doesn't work for you because there are hundreds of other cannabinoids and terpenes going on in these formulas that we need to figure out what the hell's going on. And so this over-the-counter American CBD oil industry at the moment is actually doing my head in because it's, again, blanket, blanket statement, CBD oil didn't help me. But that's, again, they don't actually know what else is in that. We know how much CBD, how much CBC, CBN, Mercy and Linalool. There's hundreds of these uh, compounds we need to look into and um, I guess what I'm trying to say is if one oil doesn't work for you, don't give up on cannabis altogether. Keep on trying. There are literally millions of different combinations we can go for. So just keep at it. Um, I've got, I'm interested to know how, you know, the Canadian model, how that's working and how the medical profession has sort of um, embraced this, um, this process in Canada and, and you know, to give us an idea of how it can be introduced here, basically. The um, Canadian system is quite different to ours in that in Canada, if you see a doctor and you have a condition that's deemed to be suitable for medicinal cannabis, you get a licence to have medicinal cannabis and you go to a dispensary where they will dispense it. The doctor doesn't always necessarily know exactly what you've been given. In Australia, you get a prescription and it's for a specific product in a specific amount, so certain milligrams per mil and a certain number, uh, you know, a certain number of milligrams and mils per day. So it's a much more prescriptive and specific, um, specific system. Uh, look, the same in, in Canada as in here. I think at the beginning, and they started nearly 20 years ago, uh, look, I suspect a, a reasonable number of doctors were um, reticent. Um, that number is, you know, those who are accepting of it has grown over the years. Even over the last two years in Australia, we've found um, more doctors are, are open to it. Not everybody is, and a lot of the profession, a lot of the uh, organisations such as the AMA remain opposed. But at the at the grassroots, there is growing uh, growing interest. So look, we're going to go down a similar path to Canada, but we have learned a little bit from their experiences. And I suspect it won't take us 20 years to get as far as um, it's taken. Like, in other words, what they've done in 20 years, we should be able to do in 5 to 10. It's a relatively controversial point of view, but virtually every jurisdiction around the world that has started with medical cannabis has eventually moved to adult and recreational use as well, self-medication, whatever. But this is not a chasm, at least in Australia, that we're going to be able to leap in one bound. If you're a proponent of individual recreational adult use of cannabis, it's not going to happen by leaping from here to there. Normalising the use of cannabis through the medical system is the first step every other jurisdiction has gone through. And it's the first step that we're going to have to go through as well. Easing the access of the current system is something that we're all shooting for now. Trying to get it to the people that need it, cost effectively, which is the difficult part of it. Trying to get it on the PBS, trying to get it approved by the TJ. All of these things are enormously difficult. And it would be wonderful if we could just say, fine, go and make it yourself and find people who know how to grow it and know how to distill it and can make the oils. And no disrespect to those people, because I'm sure this product is fantastic and works for the many people who take it. But what it hasn't been is thoroughly tested. It hasn't been. There are no testing facilities in Australia that can analyse it to the level that we need for medicinal use. If you're prepared to take that risk, that's entirely up to you. That's your decision to make. But it's not a decision that you can make for children or for other ill people, regardless of how strongly you feel about it. Medicine is medicine and has to go through the medical process. I don't like it. I don't like having to pay what I pay for my medicine. But the alternative for me is unthinkable. I'm here on behalf of a friend who's just been diagnosed with mesothelioma and he's actually been given 12 months. So what I, I'm basically here to find out who is the doctor he can go to, can he give him a prescription and where does he go to get this prescription made out. Does he have to go through the, what is it called, does he have to go through the TGA or can he just go to a doctor and get a prescription? Uh, all of the above. <laughs> to get medicinal cannabis uh, dispensed in Australia it does require TGA, which is federal and relevant state health department, which this state is the WA State of Health approval, and it needs to be prescribed by a doctor. Any doctor can prescribe 
in Western Australia for a GP to prescribe, they need the support of a specialist. Now, that can be just a letter from the specialist saying that they support the use of medicinal cannabis. Um, an application needs to be made to, as I say, state and federal health. It needs to detail the condition, uh, the reason medicinal cannabis is being used, including uh, what other treatments have failed or haven't worked. So mesothelioma as a diagnosis of itself is not going to get approved if it's cancer-related pain, if it's cancer-related nausea, if it's chronic pain, then those um, indications would be approved. But the other requirement is that other treatments have failed or have caused unacceptable side effects. Um, so any doctor can prescribe. A lot of doctors aren't aware of that. So they, some of them are genuinely surprised. But in WA, it requires a specialist to either initiate or support treatment. And if, if the doctor is not aware but is open to prescribing, then they can get in touch with any company that's importing or producing the medication and they'll assist them with the application process. No. Yeah. So you are taking a risk. If, if this was my seizure medication and my painkiller, okay, if they had come while I had illegal cannabis in my house and I was using it, they would have taken my medication away and destroyed it. They would have criminalised me. That would have put me in a position where I may have been uneligible for a prescription because of the conviction or because of I had cannabis in my house. So you are taking a risk and, and that's a terrible risk. That's a risk I lived two and a half years with. But and it's unfair. If you're talents. going to die, if that's your option, I'm sorry but I have to agree, you are better off illegally alive than you are legally dead. But there is room for these medicinal products. I am on a medicinal product. It is a good product. Um, but I could also have one of my TGA approvals rejected. I've had seven in 12 months. That's a lot. Um, so even though I am prescribed, if I lose my prescriber or they reject my next application, it's not guaranteed. The system needs changing the way you can help us is to lobby, lobby, lobby. Send a letter, you don't have to be political. Just send a letter to whoever you think should be stepping up and changing the law because it doesn't work at the moment. As you leave this evening, we've got a bunch of leaflets just outside on the table that give a whole bunch of different things that you can do to help. And it's from simple things, from writing a letter to the editor of your local paper or to calling up your local radio station. There's just a whole bunch of ideas there about things you can do. Perhaps one of the most important and powerful things these days, and titter you may, but social media has become such a force and so many people are so active on it, uh, there's a few different groups that you can follow that post stuff on a regular basis that you may disagree or agree with, but reposting that stuff so that other people who might not be as interested in this as you are We'll get to see it and hopefully we can start normalising cannabis again. Um, so this just really highlights the problem we have with educating doctors. Until they're educated, nothing's going to change and most of them don't even know what an endocannabinoid system is. So with educating doctors, with a group of seminars and then also looking at educating patients, we want to be able to empower you to understand this and go back to your doctor and know how to ask for it. If you buy medicinal cannabis on the black market and you're told it's low THC and you work on a mine site, will you pass a drug and alcohol test? No. 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 Now, there's two things about that, and there was a study done by what's called the Lambert Institute, part of the University of Sydney. So, was it so you would fail? Yes. Yeah. Mainly yeah, because it says, it's yeah. very, very difficult to test yeah. the amount of THC and CBD out. Um, in the illicit, illicit or grey market because you really need what's called a um, HPLC which is a very expensive piece of equipment um, to really know exactly what you have yep. in and your product. What you're buying that says low THC may be low THC, it may be high THC, it may have no THC and the next bottle you get might be the complete opposite. An analysis was done of a whole lot of bottles that people were using, um, which were all supposed to be the same, and the differences were, like there was no two that were the same. 
uh, which gets back to if people are buying on the black market and you know that's your choice you number one you don't know what you're getting but you don't know what the next one's going to be the so what it is says is may or may not be yeah. what's in it they're not actually testing for whether or not you influ you're influenced by it or, or high on it they're just testing for the presence of it so if there's any traces left after mm -hmm. days you're we'll still show. just as guilty yep. as whether you're high or not I've got a question I take CBD oil and I take it from the black market and I work in the mining sector and I take it twice a day and I've had several... Yeah. They don't test for CBD. They test for CBD. They didn't, didn't, yeah. didn't, didn't um, come up at all. So right. you're, you're lucky you obviously very lucky. have got a fairly pure CBD oil. Um, yeah, and they're not that hard to come by. So, sorry, are you saying they don't test for CBD? No. No, because no. so it's, no, uh, it's got th any THC in it, you're taking a risk. The, so, sorry, just to give context, there's been three um, major um, research articles. One was in Australia in children with refractory epilepsy. There was one recently in the UK that looked at CBD products, and there was one done probably about two or three years ago looking at products available in the US um, in the medicinal as well as the recreational markets. And all those together, the products that actually had what they said they had on the label was between five and ten percent. So ninety percent of those products in legal, recreational, and medicinal markets were mislabeled. So the one thing that you can guarantee, and one of the reasons it's more expensive, is medicinal cannabis in Australia doesn't undergo one test, two tests, three tests. We test every single product because we have to, probably seven or eight times. And I can guarantee what you're growing in your backyard will be different from what you grow the next time, even if it's from the same seeds, because we do that in the most controlled environment and there's still variation. So that's something you need to be aware of. On top of that as well, actually, even if it was an extremely low THC strain they were growing, if they didn't have the equipment to isolate the THC and get rid of it altogether, it's possibly can be building up in your system and you don't want to be risking your job for that. So a lot of people are saying that low THC or no THC, well tell them to prove it with a COA, ask them for that and see if they can provide there, it. There is, a, there is a way of checking THC and CBD but it means buying a tea check from the uni United States or overseas. So you could probably buy one of those if you did have oil and you needed to check it. That would be your safest bet if you wanted to check your oil. Um, it won't be cheap every time. Every so. yeah, 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 yeah. You have to check what you've got in the bottle, but then the next bottle you check it again. But um, given what a tea check costs and what a prescription costs at the moment, you're probably not going to be that much out of pocket. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't test for anything else that's no, in the oil. No. Mm. But but you would have you would have a level on those. Um, it's not a biospectrograph thing. It's not going to tell you everything. But if you know who's growing your product and what they're using and how they're growing. I don't know. Very it depends who grows it. Yep. <coughs> so this question is over here. <coughs> yeah, um, uh, there's, um, it's, it's obviously been available in America for quite some, in America for quite some time. Uh, where are the peer reviews? Where, where are the, um, where's the uh, scientists doing the same uh, tests, getting the same results? I have uh, um, inoperable lung cancer. Um, where is the peer reviews on that telling me that what strain is going to be best for me, you know, what percentages are, um, are they getting out of something? I mean, we're, we're a fresh country as far as this is concerned. America, Canada, certainly not. Where are the peer reviews? Yeah, that's exactly right. They're just not available because they haven't been done. It's illegal, it's federally illegal in America still so they can't actually be doing this research on it, um, yeah. which is a shame. And then in Canada as well. Of I mean everybody wants but cannabis to be the answer, but, but um, as so many countries must have been putting all these trials in place. Mm. Not, not with okay. patients. Um, <coughs> there's been quite a bit of work in Israel on um, human cell lines with cancer and some of them look quite promising, but it needs to get rolled into human trials before it can be really proven. Does so that, that's a difficulty. No, there's just been no, no one doing this, this kind of study. There's a lot of anecdotal evidence. You know, someone will say how they're feeling after having certain strains of cannabis. It's helping with X, Y, and Z. And at the moment, well, 
previously we are just looking at THC and CBD. As I was saying before, there's these other hundreds of compounds we need to be looking at because a 20% THC yeah. strain might help someone with their uh, condition. 20% THC strain that someone else is using isn't. What else is actually in that plant that's really making that effect? So that's the real research that needs to be done. The easiest thing to get is testimonials. Absolutely. Of course, yeah. People yeah. all standing up in front of us saying, that's well, right. this is the answer and this helped me, but they're testimonials. Testimonials really You're absolutely mean right. Else. Yeah, but the problem is. The medical community turn around and they go, unless it's a professional clinical trial, a double blind placebo, blah, 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 it's anecdote. Yes, that's right. And if it's anecdote, it's not relevant. That's right. And so even when I give my own personal testimony and I'm standing here without my walking stick, they go, oh, it's an anecdote. Right. Oh, there's, a, there's a million things and I don't doubt this, it does a lot for a lot of people. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about me specifically with my individual issue. Mm. I think um, Jason mentioned earlier it would be different per patient. You might find that one product that works for you won't work for the patient with the same problem. Um, if that's the fact, it will never become a medicine. Well, it's yeah, too it's it's complex. Yeah, it's it's a very complex, complex plant. Very complex. Because we, we could say the same about Nurofen or other drugs. They don't always work the same way in, in, in different people. And you might have a different metabolism or, you know, Nurofen may not work for you at all, but it's great for the next person. doesn't mean to say that... Um, medicinal cannabis can't still be used and trialled for different people. Oh, absolutely, I, I, I can see it's got a lot of great values. I'm just trying to nut out specifics. There, and there, there are studies. I mean, there are studies going on at the moment in Australia. Charlie Teo is doing one in, in um, GBM. Um, and they're using a one to one and they're using a, a four to one THC to CBD. There, there's one going on in Brand Queensland you know. on palliative care, sorry, yeah, brain tumours. There's another one going on in um, Queensland in palliative care patients. There's, you know, there are two products registered. One is for spasticity, pain, spasticity associated with MS. There's another one for refractory um, pediatric epilepsy in Dravet and um, lennox Gastaut syndrome. So there are companies that have done that. That The issue with cannabis is, is like everyone has said, it's, it's sure it's THC and CBD, but those are two of 144 known cannabinoids. Pig farmer uses the human race as guinea pigs, though. So what does everybody else? So what I'm saying is, is with with traditional pharmaceutical to bring a drug to registration, you have one molecule, one one condition, and and a company will invest between 50 and 100 million dollars to bring that product to market. Nobody owns THC, nobody owns CBD, nobody owns the plant. So the way these products have been caught, brought to market in the U.S., in Canada, in Israel, is they've, 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 they've legalized it for recreational, which is great, but it means we lack the data, we lack the studies in, in the way that a traditional pharmaceutical medicine would be brought to market. And, and believe it or not, as, as much as people hate to, uh, they hate, love to hate, I should say, Gene Pharma, they're the reason we're even here mm. discussing this because they put, they did the two first RCTs, random control trials, that got the evidence through for MS, uh, side effects, and um, Epidiolex for um, epilepsy. So we wouldn't even be discussing this or legalising it at all if it wasn't for them. We are you registered to go on the trial is my choice because I'm already on a trial for another problem, an autoimmune problem. So I'd, I'd be very happy to go on a cannabis trial. So um, the Lambert Initiative out of New South Wales, Sydney, uh, they've got a number of trials where you can actually register on their website and um, you can be considered for upcoming trials. But in saying that, we actually do have a couple of trials going ahead in Perth as well. Okay. Um, well, it depends what condition you're looking well, at treating. Two autoimmune, one's a muscle disease and another one is... If you, um, as you leave, there's some business cards on the table. If you just grab one of those business cards and send us an email, uh, we'll provide what information we can. Is there only one business card on that? No, no, there's three, but we're all from the same oh, organisation. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, we, we, are, we become aware of trials pretty quickly, um, so we do know what's going on. So if you just keep in touch with us. We also will um, advertise on social media if we do hear of trials coming up. Okay, because I'm a positive person and I don't want to hear anything negative. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. personal choice. Yeah. yeah. We try for the same. <laughs> yeah, just with the, um, you talk about the THC being 50-50 with 
sorry, your condition. Sorry, I forgot your name. Jason. Um, yeah, with, with um, having 50-50 with THC and the, and the CBD, is, is that, um, would you have found it safe operating machinery? No. No. Well, look, here's the funny thing. When I was first put onto it, <laughs> we had a bit of a laugh about this earlier on tonight. The TGA, because I was the first MS patient, the TGA said to me, we're not quite sure what the correct dosage is. Why don't you test it out for us and try higher doses and try lower dosages and let us know what works best. Now, that to me said straight away the TGA knows this is a safe drug because they wouldn't be saying go up and down, up and down and try it out for yourself, see what works. But the bottom line is that the dosage I found most effective for my condition meant that I was taking a certain amount in the morning, a certain amount at night. And because of the THC, I could feel the effect. It wasn't like smoking a joint, but it was enough of an effect to know that I was under the influence, like if I'd had a couple of beers, and I was not in any position to operate a vehicle, never mind heavy machinery. And, and just um, my second question was, um, does, does Charlie T have a, a, an opinion on this? Has he made any comments on it? Definitely, because he's um, heading up a, a brain tumour trial right now. So he's a positive proponent. As it showed on the movie before, for someone to go through the process to be able to get a strip for medicinal cannabis, in Western Australia, do we have to still go through the process of trying all the other drugs so all the other pharmaceutical drugs before that would become available? Is it still the same in Western Australia? Yeah, nationally, one of the two criteria is that other treatments have failed or have caused unacceptable side effects. Now, for chronic pain, you don't have to be on every medication that's available, but, you know, you'd say generally one would have needed to have trialled at least probably three, um, so that when the application goes up, it can be demonstrated that other treatments have. So it's not... Medicinal cannabis is seen as a last, not a first-line treatment. Um, and I have an opinion about that, and other people would have an opinion as well, but that is the law. Um, so, yeah, you do need to have tried some other medications. How many? Well, probably two or three at a minimum. Doesn't have to be a dozen. Yeah. I, I just want to say, me as a mum with a daughter who's eight with epilepsy, we've tried one medication and we had um, horrendous side effects. There's no way as a mum that I would put her on any other medication after what we saw in, in within two, one to two days I saw it. Um, I felt guilted into keeping her on it. Um, so we went for another three weeks and in the end I just had to pull her off it. Um, I rang my uh, husband and just said I can't do it anymore. It's just, you know, we're losing our daughter. And um, yeah, so that's where things need to change, um, you, know, for, you know, for the kids at the very least. Yeah. You know, so. yeah. And, and the TGA is pretty good about reviewing applications. Um, as long as you've tried a, a few, there's no, there's no. It's not like you have to try A, B, yeah, and C. It's yeah. Medical, you know, being to have yeah, you you have to have tried other prescription medications. They'd rather you try a toxic drug yeah, that's right. than yeah. a drug that doesn't have any side effects. <laughs> it's just it's nonsensical. But hey, that's the system we're currently under. Yeah. Let's operate within it, but lobby like hell to get it changed. Yeah. 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 Please out, send out letters, Hey, that's why we exist. We're volunteers. Yeah. We're not paid to be here. Well, it's everything. And everything in the film is correct. Equally, most of that film was shot last year. So things have improved. I can say it's easy. It isn't. There's still lots of hoops. But the system is improved from when that film was made. That was so <laughs> As it is, it's impossible to access. It's impossible for the average person to afford it. So you really have no choice but to work that out. I think that any doctor should be able to prescribe it the same as any other pharmaceutical drugs. Yeah, so where I used to think it was a drug um, that wasn't good for you, I now think it's a drug that is, it can be beneficial. Alcohol, cigarettes are legal, and look at the damage they do. This is a product that will heal everybody.